on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. Uh, the program is subtitled Voice Myths. Voice Myths. People think they have a certain type of problem in the medical community. My colleagues in medicine and academia are also of the view they are well versed in what uh, they're telling patients and I find all too often it's misinformation, misstatement, and misleading. I'm sorry to tell you that. I wrote books about that, and the latest book I have is called Curing Hopeless Voice Problems, called The Strangled Voice Spasmodic Dysphonia, a medically uh, term. We have two young ladies in studio with me, and I brought them together for a very simple reason. One has spasmodic dysphonia, there's no question about it, and the other young lady is uh, given a possibility of having spasmodic dysphonia by a well-qualified in uh, neurologist, I differ with the diagnosis, and I'm saying uh, publicly and I'm saying privately to her that she doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia. But if she does, they would Botox her for life when she doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia. The other young lady is an attorney, and she does have spasmodic dysphonia, and she has had Botox. Uh, it hasn't done the job for her uh, to her satisfaction, and she's come to see me from uh, outside the LA area. So we're going to talk with both of them because I think it's a very interesting contrast. One has spasmodic dysphonia, what I'm telling her to do, and the other doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia and what I'm telling her to do. The prognosis I find for both of them is excellent, but one with spasmodic dysphonia is going to take a while. The other can do it quickly, but we're into voice myths. So let's get to the two young ladies. Let's start with your name is? Sarah. Sarah. Why did you come to see me? Could you briefly tell me what happened? Um, I came to see you because I wanted to discuss with you the possibility that I might have spasmodic dysphonia. I had been told by a gastroenterologist who was working me up for reflux mm -hmm. that I might possibly have spasmodic dysphonia. I don't know if you know it, so I will tell you it's in my book, Curing Hopeless Voices, um, The Strangled Voice, Spasmodic Dysphonia. And the book is on my website. It's free. You download it if you want. There's no charge. I, um, um, I give away my secrets. Um, in 1992, um, Merck sponsored the study that um, acid reflux was causing bad and raspy voices. I don't find that true clinically. But uh, people are then given um, acid reflux, uh, basically for long periods of time, if not life. I'm not sure of the long-term um, uh, treatment, but uh, patient after patient tells me uh, when they have a bad raspy voice, and especially when they have spasmodic dysphonia, that uh, acid reflux is a basic cause of their problem. That's my take clinically. It's not true from my clinical experience. Study was done in 1992. And patients across the country who have bad, raspy voices are told it's acid reflux. Not so. It's a myth, in my opinion. Now, you were told acid reflux is the cause. It was suggested to me by an ENT that that might be the cause of my problem. The one you're using, the, the voice problem you have? Yes. Okay. It's hard to hear you. Um, my voice feels very weak, and it's difficult for me to project volume. How long does it last? How, how much can you talk a day? I speak maybe an hour a day at most. Do you, does your neck get fatigued? Yes. What did I tell you to do? You told me to raise the pitch of my voice. Mm -hmm. And how did I tell you to do that, do you recall? I saw you once. Yes, you did. Well, you, you uh, did a maneuver with your hand on my solar plexus, mm -hmm. where you jiggled that. Mm -hmm. And you also had me hum the first bar of Happy Birthday. Could you do that now? <laughs> Where do you feel that humming? Um, 
across the bridge of my nose and the lower part of my face. Where do you feel it when you're talking the way you normally talk? When I normally talk, I feel it in the back of my lower throat. Mm -hmm. Could you point to that area? Thank you. That's voice suicide. You're misusing your voice. Bad, raspy voices, 99% of the time, clinically, is in the lower throat. And what I try to get you to do is change the placement of the voice to the face. Could you hum the first part of Happy Birthday again? <laughs> Perfectly normal voice. And it's very simple, isn't it? Yes. No drugs, no surgery. You have a voice image. You don't want to use this voice, the one up there. I want you to hum the first part of Happy Birthday, and then after you hum, I want you to say, happy, to talk it, Happy Birthday, Mort Cooper. Can you try that? <laughs> happy Birthday, Mort Cooper. But you go off to hum. I want you to hum it. <laughs> happy birthday, Sarah. <laughs> happy birthday, Mort Cooper. It's not in the face. I want you to talk to me when you say happy birthday as though I'm a little hard of hearing. A little hard of hearing. Could you do that for me? Happy birthday, Mort Cooper. No, I want you to make it louder. I'm a little hard of hearing, Sarah. Happy birthday, Mort Cooper. Okay. Now, how loud is that to you? It's a bit loud. How loud? I can't quantify it in decibels. I don't know. You're talking in the lowest throat now. Hum the first bar of happy birthday. <laughs> you feel it up there. Now I want you to say it to me like I'm deaf. Like I'm deaf. Happy birthday, Mort Cooper. Happy birthday, Mort Cooper. No, you're down here. I want you to talk on the hum. Happy birthday, Mort Cooper. Still not doing it. I want it louder. Happy birthday, Mort you're, Cooper. You're using it from the lower throat. That's why if you do the lower throat voice, you're going to fatigue. It's going to hurt you. Yes. And that's what you tell me, right? Right. Right. You have to talk in the face. Now, here's how we change it. Mm-hmm. One. Mm-hmm. One. You drop it off. I want the one at the same level. Mm-hmm. One. Mm-hmm. One. That's it. Mm-hmm. Two. Mm-hmm. Two. That's your voice. Mm-hmm. Three. Mm-hmm. Three. You don't like that voice. You've been telling me that. You don't like it. It sounds unfamiliar. It's unfamiliar. I'll buy that. Do you like it? I don't know. Try it again. Mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm, three. Mm -hmm, three. That's how you get out of this. You practice on the numbers. It's not a voice that you're familiar with. How long have you used the voice that you're talking with? It's been a problem for six months. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long I've been using my voice. It Down hasn't here. sounded this way for Say, six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. One. Say it louder. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Two. Does it sound like a little girl to you? This is honest time, it, Sarah. It sounds unfamiliar to me. How would you characterize it? It's a, a little girl. It's a. It's not you. It's not a mature voice. It sounds like an artificial voice. It is, because you're not familiar with it. Do that again. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. One. And count to ten. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Two. You're going off it. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Three. You're going to have to practice that till you get ready. Okay, let's move on to the young lady. Did you hear the change? What is your name? Nancy. Nancy. Do you hear the change in voice? I do. How loud do you hear her? Is she loud? Not to me. No, not to me. Not to the audience, but to herself. You hear yourself through the bones of your head three one thousandths of a second faster internally than you do from your mouth to your ears through air conduction. So you can't tell. You hear her. I do. So do I. She can't hear herself. That's not a put-down. That's a reality. You have spasmodic dysphonia. I do. Do you know her name? Sarah. Sarah doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia. 
And if she had acid reflux, I don't believe it would make any difference because people who come to me tell me they have acid reflux. Very few do, but I say it doesn't make a difference. It's the way they're using their voice. Were you told you have acid reflux? No. Okay. You were treated with Botox? Yes. By a very prominent nose and throat doctor? Uh, and a, a voice specialist. Right. Well-intentioned, humane, compassionate. Absolutely. Lovely bedside manner. Absolutely. Did the Botox shots help you? For limited periods of time, but it never uh, totally took away the shakiness of the voice, uh, the breakup, the so-called strangulation mm -hmm. sound. You feel it in the lower throat? <clears throat> yes. You clear your throat? because you're squeezing from the lower throat. All spasmodic dysphonia is from the lower throat. The, medics, the medical people and I agree. It's all from the lower throat. They say you have a neurological problem they can't find. It's incurable. They tell you that? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you have a neurological problem that, can't, um, that is causing your problem. That's my paradigm. I differ with them. They told you there are no cures of your problem. That's correct at least at the present time. Mm -hmm. you, heard, you heard a DVD of two hours in my office. These patients are cured, diagnosed by the creme de la creme in nose and throat doctors in the country with SD. Yes, I did. Yes. How can I cure a neurological problem? You're a lawyer. When all medicine, all academia say there is no cure, how can I do that? That's why I've come to see you, mm -hmm. because I read about the success rate that you've had mm -hmm. with people diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia. And what also appealed to me was the non-invasive aspect of your procedures. I do it all naturally. How can I cure a neurological problem, a dystonia, that's what they say you have, a disease, a genetic problem, a basal ganglia impairment in the brain, a chemical imbalance in the brain? How can I cure that condition, a medical condition, by just telling you what to do? What did I tell you to do with your voice? Well, there are two aspects. Uh, you indicated to me that my breathing, for lack of a better term, is bass backwards. In mm. other words, that uh, there are certain techniques where when you take a breath, your stomach should move out. And then as you speak on the breath, you should be pulling in. And I do just the reverse. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I'm trying to speak without appropriate breath support. SD patients specialize in, in talking without air. Did you know that? No, I did not. That's why they can't talk. You have to learn to use midsection breath control. And the young lady with you, your name is? Sarah. Doesn't have to do that. All she has to do is put her voice up in the face and talk a little louder, but she doesn't like that because that is a voice that's unfamiliar to her and she doesn't want to put her voice out there. What will people say? Am I right about that, Sarah? What I'm, will people say if you use the voice I'm telling you to use? I'm not conscious that that's my thought, but perhaps it is. I don't know. You're talking this way, right. The voice image shatters patience. They will not change, although mechanically what I'm telling you is right on the button. I wrote about that in 1971, peer review. I've been peer reviewed about curing um, bowed vocal cords, unilateral cord paralysis, peer reviewed, medical journals, academic journals, and so forth. But I'm a voice in the wilderness and I'm ignored, which is okay with me. Dr. Cooper, you also indicated to me that as someone with spasmodic dysphonia, I not only need to relearn, in a sense, 
uh, appropriate breath support, but that I too need to raise the pitch of my voice so that I too need to speak through uh, the facial area, the nose, the mouth. The face. The face. Now, how did you, you told me in the office that you tried to lower your, you correct me if I'm wrong, you tried to lower your voice, you were a woman in the legal field so you wanted more authority. You did that gradually from what I understand. I told you that's the kiss of death, that's how you, you wind up with bad raspy voices or what you have, spasmodic dysphonia. I'm saying in essence that you get spasmodic dysphonia because you are self unintentionally aware yourself have induced this condition by squeezing your voice from the lower throat and reversing the breathing. I would absolutely say that there was no personal awareness that I had done that or was even doing that. But it could very well be circumstantial. As I became an adult, matured, went into the legal field, mm -hmm. but it, it certainly wasn't a conscious no, it wasn't. decision. But did you do it? Did you drop the pitch of your voice for authority in the courtroom? Probably so. Okay. I want you to talk to me now. I told you to raise the pitch, right? Right. I want you to say hello to me like I'm a little hard of hearing. Hello? No, it's from the lower throat. I want you to talk in a higher pitch. Hello? Hello? Say it like that. Hi. Hi. There's your voice. Say it again. Hi. Hi one. Hi one. Now Sarah over here is saying, what are you saying as you nod? I notice a change. You notice a change? Absolutely. Is it clear? Definitely. And steady. Do you hear the difference? You don't hear it. As Sarah said before, it's unfamiliar. I think it sounds more childish, girly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't like it, but do you hear the change? Do it again. Say, say hi. Hi, what? No, no, you can't do that. Okay. Just say, hi. Hi. Say it like you, hi. Hi. Yeah. I'm telling you to raise the pitch. You have lowered the pitch. And when you say hi, what happens to your stomach? You have one hand on your stomach. What happens? Does your does the stomach go out? Yes. It should go in. You're trying to drive the car with the brake on in reverse. No gas in the tank and no air in the, in the tires. That's what SD patients do. I want you to say hi again. Hi. Right. I put you in a voice mirror. I show you that when you do what you're doing, your voice is a higher pitch, A, B, C, around middle C. You're much slower when you talk and you're squeezing like this. Can you feel the squeeze in your lower throat? Yes. Can you hum the first bar of Happy Birthday? <laughs> it's in the lower <laughs> throat. <laughs> Sarah, can you hear it? Squeeze. Say really like you're shocked at what I just told you. Really? It's lower throat. Say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What happens to your voice, Sarah? Where does it go? It goes up into her head. That's right. That's the face voice. Say it again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I use mm-hmm to get you to put your voice in your face the same as Sarah. And then mm-hmm, one. Try it, Sarah. Mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm, three. You hear it? I do. Then, after a while, when you get the face voice, I can lower the pitch and give you the voice that you feel internally that represents you, but that will hold up. Do you understand? I do. This is just the beginning. Try mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Mm-hmm, one. Go to two, three. Mm-hmm, two. Mm -hmm. Three. Now, how do you normally talk? Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. You're killing your voice. I call it voice suicide. The books I have are free in the library. If you don't spend a cent, anybody wants a book, go to the library, you get the, the, the take on how I'm doing what I do. People ask me, how do I make a living? If I'm giving away my books in the library, right? 
The latest book, Curing Hopeless Voice Problems, calls uh, Strangled Voice Spasmodic Dysphonia, is on my website, free. You download it. Hmm? They asked, how do I make a living? How do I make a living, counsel? By treating people with spasmodic dysphonia and helping them to overcome it. They have myths. They're living by myths. All of you are living by myths. Sarah can overcome her voice problem much faster because she doesn't have spasmodic dysphonia. She's had a number of procedures. Could you briefly tell us about the procedures, if you care to? Yes, I've had um, four brain stem surgeries mm -hmm. involving the cranial nerves. Um, Teflon was wrapped around the cranial nerves because I was suffering from vertigo, mm -hmm. facial spasm, blepharospasm, and glossopharyngeal neuralgia. I don't see blepharospasm. What do you call it? Blepharospasm. I don't see them. You don't have them that I see. I don't have That's them any longer. No. I don't have them any longer. You don't have them, but I don't see them now. And uh, some good-hearted, well-intentioned medic told you what was the solution to some of your condition? Microvascular compression, decompression surgery. Yeah, but what is he saying? That you should have your teeth removed or something? Oh, one of the approaches was to rearrange my bite, mm -hmm. and I had all of my teeth reconfigured mm -hmm. early on in my illness. I had a young lady who came to me, sent by a, a dentist, um, and he had removed all her teeth. She had pain in the, in the jaw, all of them. Young lady, beautiful. And she was talking all the way down here. I changed the pitch of her voice to the face, and the pain went away, and she said, oh my God, Oh my God, she, didn't have, she shouldn't have had uh, what she said, is uh, the extractions of her teeth. Now, we live by myths in all too many areas of our lives. I only can tell you what, the, what I find in regard to those voice myths that you're living by. Sarah, you think that you're shouting when it's unfamiliar to you. You can use other terms. Give me the mm hmm, one, mm hmm, two. Mm hmm, one. You're dropping on the one. Mm hmm, one. Mm hmm, two. Mm hmm, three. Mm hmm, four. Mm hmm, five. Do you feel the buzz up there when you're doing it? I do. You use that voice, and you can help yourself to get out of this voice problem that you have. Now, Nancy, you try it. And you see the difference between what you have is called muscle tension disorder and spasmodic dysphonia. I wish I was able to uh, maintain the pitch that Sarah has. She can do it easily, but it's unfamiliar, she says, and it's not loved. It's not loved. That voice is not loved. But as I said to you, you use that, and we can bring the range down once you get into the face versus the lower throat. Do you understand what I'm doing? I do. All good and great voices are in the face, in the mask. The term mask comes from ancient Greek times when actors on stage 2,500 years ago actually talked in the mask to imitate women because women weren't allowed on stage. Might that be a technique that we should use? Yes. Can you say mm-hmm? Mm-hmm. No, you go down here. So I'm going to try something else because you can't do that. The mm-hmm is great. So I want you to Go above the pitch. You're a pianist, aren't you? Yes. I love that yes. Say yes again. Yes. Sarah, do you hear the change? Yes, I do. Is that voice clear when she says it? It is. You lowered the pitch of your voice for one of varied reasons, and you went into the lower throat. That's how you get strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia. My medical colleagues are well-intentioned. My academician uh, colleagues are well-intentioned. They're all well-intentioned. You're creating your own problem with spasmodic dysphonia. And Sarah is too. And she has what I call myasthenia laryngeus. It's, it's updated and now called muscle tension disorder. It's the same thing, that you're misusing your voice. So Dr. Cooper, what I hear you saying is that uh, people with spasmodic dysphonia have a much greater challenge 
Absolutely. Her condition, Sarah's condition, is simple for me. We have a voice image problem, and she's going to hold back. I told her, both of you, before we came to the studio, about Suzette, who was a school teacher who talked in the lowest throat for authority, and it took her two years to change, and she told her ear, nose, and throat doctor that I was misleading her because when she talked higher, when I talked higher, she didn't like it, it's hoarse. And he told her her voice was perfect, she sounded great, just do what I said. It took her two years to do what I told her initially. The voice myths, the voice images. You don't hear yourself as you actually are. What you hire is a clinical ear. You need a gifted clinical ear to tell you higher or lower and then work on your voice image because you're led by voice myths. I published on the voice image in 1971 peer review. It doesn't make a difference because the patients don't understand peer review and if they did, they can't hear themselves so they're not going to let you do for them what ne is needed. So if I hear you correctly, uh, are you suggesting that a good exercise might be to literally take a mask and speak into the mask the way the Greeks did at one time? Might that be a good technique? You could try it. I have another technique for you. What's that? What's the sound she said before that you liked, Sarah? What was the sound that you could hear the difference? When she said yes. Can you say yes? Yes. So you go around, you're a yes lady. You fit into society. We have a lot of yes people. Unfortunately, yes is only one syllable. <laughs> now here's how you do it. Say yes. Yes. Now say one. One. Say yes two. Yes two. Yes three. Yes three. So Sarah uses mm-hmm, one, and you use the mantra Yes, one, yes, two, right? Right. Okay. Time is fleeting, and I hear the music, so we have to go. It's a fast how, uh, half hour. It's a pleasure talking with you, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, thank you for joining with me. Mm-hmm, and yes, okay? I'm Ward Cooper. Bye-bye.